Network Presentation. This is the Chip and Ham Sports Medicine Game of the Week. With your host, Mr. Dave Bird, and special guest NFL Hall of Famer, Mr. Willie Lanier. Game of the Week is being brought to you by Bruce's. You have the right to choose. Choose Bruce's Body Shop. You crops where people and food come together. The Whitlock Group, AFCC and Falcom. Heckler Chevrolet and Heckler Pontiac Buick GMC, the home of the GM Giant. Welcome back to W.T. Woodson High School. I'm Dave Bird, along with NFL Hall of Famer Willie Lanier. And Willie, it's a little unusual this week. We don't always know the teams quite so well, but we brought uh, Annandale through the state semis at uh, Richmond against Thomasdale last week, and we saw Pulaski County last year, and basically they bring back a lot of the same team. They really do, and I think the only difference will be their fine running back Webb, who has a broken jaw and probably will not play today. And as you said, having seen Annandale last week down there with Thomas Dale, uh, they have a fine inside middle linebacker, Maurice Dale. Daniels, they have a good running back in Jennings. And with the win today, there probably won't be as much passing. If it is, it will affect the game. So it should be an outstanding game here for the state championship. Now, uh, I talked a little bit earlier while Willie was uh, talking to the coaches, and we, I was speaking with the folks at home that the fact that the single wing tee, when run the way Pulaski does, is extremely hard to stop because every play looks a little bit like some other play, but it never ends up that way. You're right about that, and we saw it last year, the kind of execution that they run on that play, even though Webb probably won't play today. Their players execute that very well. It's sort of an inside counter play with an action that causes defenses to make improper decision. So I expect that to be a play that they're going to use a lot today, and we'll just have to see how quickly Annandale adjusts to it. Well, Annandale's defenders will definitely have to stay home and, and guard their territory because Pulaski County is a little tough to handle. Now, now Annandale, you kind of alluded to the fact, and, and the coach did too, that this win could play heck with their uh, passing game, which is about Annandale does, Pulaski County does. We'll find out whose game plan turns out to be. You're right. The kickoff is next. It's the Virginia Triple A Division 6 State Finals. And we're back to W.T. Woodson High School. Winning the toss were the Cougars of Pulaski County. They've already taken the field, but now they take off their helmets for the singing of our national anthem today. 
There's the logo of Home Team Sports on which you're watching today's broadcast, a service of Lansing Sports Network out of Richmond, Virginia. I'm Dave Bird along with Willie Lanier. You see the players on the field now as they're just about ready for today's game. If we get a shot of the flag, you will see it blowing from uh, right to left, from west to east more or less, right through this station at a very, very brisk clip. Everybody who's here says 35 to 40 miles an hour is a pretty good guess on some of the gusts of wind uh, today, Willie. And uh, The kicking game, passing game, anything where that ball leaves the ground is going to be very difficult. On the other hand, no precipi precipitation. The field should be fairly good. You're right about that. And the weather has really helped out here today because there was an ex expectation of some kind of precipitation. But as you said, there's no precipitation. We have a very sunny day. But this is probably the windiest condition that I've been around at a football game in my entire career. So that's going to have a great effect on either team's ability to throw the ball. The Adams will kick off. Chris Seeger, their senior kicker, 5'10". He's kicked off 50 times so far this year. And the average he has is the 10 yard line on all his kicks so that's where you'd expect to see it however he kicks into that strong wind and that means that uh, at the end of the game Annandale will have the wind favoring it which of course uh, could be an advantage as things get down but Willie as we've said so many times Pulaski County very explosive don't give them an inch because if they get a, a 7 or 14 point lead they're very difficult to catch up with. You see last year when we saw them in the state championship game Carl Lewis returned a punt or a kickoff for a touchdown but I think what Annandale needs to do is keep the ball low and not allow the wind to affect it so if it would be almost a squib kick do something like that but don't allow the wind to determine how your initial kickoff in the state championship game goes. Seeger ready to address the ball for Annandale. As you mentioned, Carl Lewis deep in the center of the return formation for Pulaski County. This uh, kick will likely be kind of short because uh, the wind is very stiff in the face of Chris Seeger. Just about ready to get underway. Thanks for joining us today. The Virginia AAA Division VI State Championship is underway, and the kick is short and taken by one of the upmen for Pulaski County. Now that's number 82 for the Cougars, John Lilly. And uh, he will kneel down immediately and put the ball into play at about the 29-yard line for the Cougars. And that was a good decision on Lilly's part. You could see the way the wind was holding that ball up. It only went to about the 29-yard line of Pulaski County. But that gives them a good position to start their initial offensive drive. Quarterback is Eves. He's got some great running statistics himself. Eves gives the first handoff to Lewis. Ball's on the turf. Annadale thinks they've got it. We look for official confirmation from the bottom of the pile, and we'll see what happens. Usually when there's no indication, that's not good for the defense, and it will go as the first down run for Lewis. On that run, it appeared that the middle linebacker, Daniels, was able to get through the line of scrimmage and make a nice hit on Lewis. He fumbled the ball, but as was noted, it was recovered by Pulaski County. Lewis once again in the backfield, along with Red. They're missing Eric Webb, their wing back. Lewis again on the second run. Annandale expecting that. One of the things that they could run into as a problem for Annandale, although not yet, of course, is over-pursuit, over-anxiety, and that can get you in trouble on defense. Oh, you really can, but on that last play, number 65, Stephen Dredge made that stop for Annandale, and they are really penetrating this line of scrimmage of Pulaski County. Pulaski County has shown an ability to execute probably as well as any high school team that I've seen, and on those first two plays, Annandale has really stopped them in their tracks. Pulaski County has a third down and long now. Lewis again, he's working right. He's got a great average from line of scrimmage. He did fumble this time. And it looks like Annandale has recovered as ball handling. This has been very uncharacteristic for Pulaski County. They've usually been an excellent executing team. You're right about that, but it appeared possible on that play as Lewis appeared to start to explode through some of the tackles. An arm came out, knocked the ball loose, which is a great advantage for Annandale. But it makes you wonder the effect of the cold conditions, the windy conditions, and what effect that might have on any receiver running back holding on to the ball. They'll take over on the 35-yard line after the fumble recovery, so Annandale gets the first break of the game. Let's see how their slightly more explosive offense fares in these tough weather conditions. 
Here come the Adam, Dale Adams, uh, blown off before the start of the play. I, Willie, I thought that there was some movement in the backfield, perhaps leaning a little toward the line of scrimmage. McPhail on the key, keeper was unable to do anything. No, that was on the defensive side. What occurred was that one of the defensive linemen for Pulaski County jumped off side, and therefore Annandale will pick up another five yards for a first and five. Let's look at the replay of the fumble, Willie, and see if we can pick up as best we can uh, the way that play went and how the fumble came out. We'll look at it after this play. No, we'll look at it right now. Well, it was just a handoff to Lewis going to his right. He makes a sweep and he cuts up field and appears that one of the defenders for Annandale. Looked like Crittenden had the pickup on the fumble. But they made a great recovery, and Annandale starts his drive at the 30-yard line. All right, here comes Annandale again, picking up five yards on the defensive penalty. Jennings coming out of the backfield, really working those legs right up the middle of the field. Eric Jennings, the 170-pound uh, senior, averages almost seven yards every carry. Got a first down right off the bat. He did, and we saw Eric last week in their game down in Richmond, and he didn't gain as much yardage as his average normally portends, but you can see on that play, basically a straight-ahead play, and Jennings just was able to take a leg away, saw it from the defenders, and to pick up a first down for Annandale. Annandale will probably have to play a pretty perfect game today. Already a mistake's been made by Pulaski County. They don't likely make too many more. It's an eye formation in the backfield. Santa Anna and Jennings is the tailback. McPhail, the quarterback, gives it to the up man. Santa Anna runs. Looks like he's got himself five or six yards. If those two can alternate well, last week, Annandale played Thomas Dale. They only had one good running back. Having two, I think, would be a big advantage against that defensive line. It really will, because as we were talking earlier, the defensive line for Pulaski County averages, I think you said, maybe 20 to 25 pounds, 30 pounds more than the offensive line of Annandale. But the thing that happens, as long as you can execute well, get good position, then you can still gain yardage, as Annandale has shown they've been able to do so far. The Adams continue to roll now, second down and four. Six yards the gain for Santa Ana on the first down. McPhail this time to the tailback. Jennings cracks through the hole. Looks like he's got another first down inside the 10-yard line, down to about the seven. Willie, it'll be first and goal. And Annandale is continuing to run their inside running game extremely well. All, the, all they're doing is matching up offensive linemen with defensive linemen, trying to just find the creases, and they are continuing to do that very well. And they uh, definitely take into account the big defensive line there. Randy Dunnigan, who is a first-team all-region player, they seem to be running away from him a lot. I wouldn't blame him a bit. If I saw him coming to me, I'd run away from him, too. John McPhail's the quarterback, barks the signals for the red-clad Adams, who is movement in the backfield as Jennings takes the handoff but flags all over the field on that play. Yeah, it appeared to be the left deep offensive end for Annandale, jumped off side on that play. And that's not something obviously you want to have happen, especially down this close, trying to take advantage of this fumble recovery. But we'll wait for the officials to make the call. Well, we talk about the heritage of these teams coming into today's game. We've got the reigning champion. Here you see the indication from referee Tony Scarcelli. The reigning Virginia champion in AAA is Pulaski County. They're on a 21-game winning streak and rated number 10 in the USA Today national poll. But Annandale's got quite a history itself. They won the state championship twice in the 60s and twice in the 70s. And we went by their breakfast this morning. They had the trophies on their breakfast table so everybody could look at them and get <laughs> psyched up by them. Yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to try to bring the history of what your program has been to those who are currently playing. Try to let them know that they have something to measure up to and maybe that can make a big difference in their quest for their own championship. First and goal from the 12. Once again, Jennings on the run got about a yard, maybe a yard and a half before he's stuffed by the left side of the Pulaski defense. That'll bring up second down and goal to go. Long yardage for the Adams. That was Jeff Berkeley from Pulaski County who was able to get through and make that stop. And I was just thinking that possibly since the Adams have not thrown the ball at this point in the game, play action down close. They've been running the game all along. They could have an advantage maybe going to a tight end on a crossing pattern. So we'll just have to take a look at what they decide to do on this next play. Second and goal from the 11 might be a great time to pass. Wind in the face of the quarterback, McPhail, a 52% passer coming into today's game. Takes the snap, gives it to the up man. Santa Ana cracks into the line. Didn't get much, maybe two or three yards. It's going to bring up third and goal. Long yardage from about the seven-yard line, the way they stack. Maybe eight, actually. And I think the thing that you can see now is that this defensive line of Pulaski County, which has a weight advantage, has been able to make some adjustments to that inside running game that Annandale has run. So obviously Annandale now have to start making some adjustments to offset that which was working for them, but has been shut down the last few plays. Wide receivers left are Seeger and Clark. Crittenden goes right. 
Pro set formation in the backfield for the Adams in their red uniforms. Decide to take it the, the secure way, and that's in the hands of Giovanni Santa Ana as he breaks off left guard, but that's going to be short of the uh, first down. Well, they couldn't get a first down. Short of the touchdown, now it's fourth down. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Annandale does at this point. While they've thrown the tee out on the field, they're going to go for a field goal to try to get some points in this game, which should be a challenge as the day progresses. Well, by no means a gimme. Seeger just barely made the one in overtime last week to defeat Thomas Dale in Richmond. He shanked it, but it just made it through the goalpost. This one will be a 20, call it a 21-yard kick. It's down, it's up, it's blocked, and it doesn't make the goalpost. It'll be a touchback. For Pulaski County, they'll bring it out to the 20, and uh, Willie, that's not what Annandale wanted to see on their first drive. Certainly not, especially not being able to capitalize on that fumble by Pulaski County, but the defense of Pulaski County was able to hold. Annandale decide not to put the ball in the air on any of those plays when they were down close, maybe to try to get the ball into the end zone, but Pulaski County has to be very happy for being able to not allow any points after that turnover so deep in their territory. Indeed, you could hear the sigh of relief among the thousands of Pulaski County Cougar fans who have come today. They come out in that wing T formation. It's very difficult with the misdirection to pick up who's got the ball, but Annandale figured it out. It was Carl Lewis again, and Willie, if I'm not mistaken, I think Lewis has touched the ball on just about every play. No, really on that last play, the quarterback faked the ball to Lewis, but tried to have an option off of it and just wasn't able to pick up anything. Mike Herlin's number 78 for Annandale made the stop for really no gain and a loss on that play. Eves on the keeper on that play, but it was the misdirection using Lewis, and that's what we said at the top of the show. Pulaski County is very good at disguising what they're doing with the ball. You have to watch very carefully to see who's got the ball. This time the handoff is up the middle. Pulaski County, of course, operating without their number one running back. Well, the number one in the playoffs anyway. Brian Red carried on that play. They'd certainly like to have Eric Webb number four in the game, but he's out with a broken jaw, unlikely to be in today's game. It would have been a great talent for the fans in this area to have seen Eric Webb. We saw him last year in the championship game, score three touchdowns, block a couple of punt punts, and just an outstanding all-around play. Unfortunately, has a broken jaw from last week and probably will not play. Here come the Cougars again. Another inside handoff. This time it goes to Timmy Kimbrough. Kimbrough stuffed after a gain of just a couple of yards. It'll bring up third down and long yardage. It's the Annandale defense, or actually fourth down, rather. Annandale's defense has surprised us. And Maurice Daniels made as good a defensive play from middle linebacker position that you would ever see on a counter play. That's the kind of execution that Pulaski is used to being able to run. Daniels read the play in the backfield, made the stop, forced the fourth down punting situation for Pulaski County. Deep is Prince Addy. Now he took one back for a touchdown last week. He'll get a chance to handle this. No, Crittenden does. Picks it up on the 33 to the 35 to the 40 to the 45. He's across this field to 45, 40, 35. Down inside the 30-yard line. Willie, it looked as if the field was divided in half. There were three or four players up on the coverage. Then there was a span of about 25 yards with no Pulaski County players at all. You're right about that. And that was a great play on Crittenden's part. It appeared that once that ball hit the ground, it was getting ready to really bounce past him very quickly. He was able to catch it, got by that first wave of Pulaski County players, about five or six, and appeared that had he cut back to his right, he might have picked up more yards and maybe gone for a score. But again, Annandale finds themselves deep deep in Pulaski County territory, and they need to capitalize on these two early opportunities. Make it a 42-yard return for Crittenden, and it puts Annandale back in business. They have been winning that field position battle at least early in this game. We've got four minutes and five seconds left to play. First quarter action, it's the state championship for all the marbles. They won't be playing next week, but only one of these teams will have the trophy in their case. Santa Ana again cracks up the middle. He's down to about the 22-yard line. Call it a gain of six. It appears that Annandale has decided from that running attack to really keep it off tackle, guard center kind of holes, and that's the type of approach that they've taken. And they've been able to gain good yardage, but they need to find a way to get into the end zone. Let's take another look at that punt, Willie. We would expect Prince Addy, the guy who scored the touchdown last week against Thomas Dale, to be taking the ball, but it was Crittenden who took it. But the way the ball hit and bounced out here in this kind of weather, you saw Crittenden made a great catch on the ball because it had a chance to get away from him. Very poor tackling on Pulaski County's part, and he was able to pick up a lot of yardage for 
to the Adams. Second down and four, Santa Ana again looks like he's got the first down. And Willie, one thing to keep in mind is Annandale working against the wind may really want to keep their passing attack in check until the second quarter. Well, that's a very good point because as we had said early in the broadcast, these winds are extremely difficult and it'll be hard to really know what would happen once you put the ball up. But I think that if they find their running attack stalling, that you have to take that opportunity to test your passing attack to really see what might happen as far as this wind is concerned. Little over three minutes to play in the first quarter. Annandale, whatever they've tried, whatever they've tested, has so far worked pretty well. They had a field goal blocked just a few moments ago, but took the ball back on downs. Jennings can't turn the corner. Looks like he lost a yard. Great job of pursuit by the right side of the Pulaski County Cougar defense, and that'll bring up second down and more than 10. That was, that was Jeff Berkeley, the defensive right in for Pulaski County who made that play. Jennings had an opportunity to cut inside on that play, and he really didn't follow his blocker. So the blocker had Berkeley on his outside, and really Jennings just allowed the block to drive Berkeley toward him. So the running back really didn't gain as much as he could have on that last play. Second down, officially call it 12 yards to go. Adams slot formation right with Seeger in the slot. Inside, Santa Ana down near the 10. Remind uh, all our folks who are watching this broadcast, our usual Virginia AAA broadcast for the first time, that Bruce's Body Shop, a well-respected body shop out of Richmond, Virginia, sponsors our Player of the Week program, and they award a jacket to the player who most distinguishes himself in our football game. And uh, a little bit later on in the game, Willie Lanier and I will put our heads together and try to determine who that was, and it's always fun to do. Third down and eight yards to go for the Adams now. Slot formation right. Clark and Seeger, Crittenden left. McPhail rolling, keeping. Now looking to pass. Too bad he couldn't turn the corner because, well, I don't know if he'd gotten the first down, but he looked like he had at least five or eight yards of open field before he hit the turf. Well, one thing for McPhail on that play, he started to roll out to the right, but Brian Clark had come wide open in the end zone. He just wasn't able to spot him. Obviously, it was noted lost his footing, went down, now forcing another fourth down situation and no doubt probably another field goal attempt, but we'll wait for the coach to make his call. Looks like they might go for it as McPhail stares at his coaching staff. Led, of course, by Annandale graduate Dick Adams. Well, they're going to have to hurry up with this play because they took a lot more time than necessary to get the call from the sideline. McPhail quickly brings him to the line of scrimmage. Twin receivers in single coverage to the left. Fake to Santa Ana, rolling, looking left. Can't find a receiver open. And McPhail is unable to make it even back to the line of scrimmage. It was great coverage, but single man-to-man -man coverage down that left sideline. And the defense of Pulaski County, again, has to realize the kind of outstanding job they've done. They've been able to take a team that has been able to drive down the field on them twice, get deep in that territory, and allow them not to come away with any points, block the field goal attempt the previous time, and now stop the fourth down play. And this game has been played at their end of the field with only about 38 seconds left in the first quarter. This may well be the last play of that first quarter as the Cougars take back over. Remember, they almost never pass. Of course, you say that, and then things change. Look like Red on the first down carry. Brian Red gets up the uh, off the bottom of the pile there. Uh, they'll credit him with about a three-yard gain. Pulaski County uncharacteristically not racking up the yards like we would expect. Well, I think any time you take away an Eric Webb out in the offense, who was a very integral part of their offense, very, very talented performer, that's going to have some effect. But uh, they have not equipped themselves well so far this afternoon here at Annandale, and now we're just coming down to the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter, as they probably did not get that playoff. They snapped the ball right at what would have been the end of the quarter, but I think they've waved it off. Now they swap ends, and we take a two-minute timeout. We'll be right back with more of the AAA State Finals Division 6. Woodson High School, Fairfax, Virginia, scene of the Virginia State final game. On second down, the carry was by Lewis for a short game. Third down and eight now for Pulaski County. A little bit of a mishandling there in the backfield. The ball ends up in the hands of Brian Red, and Annandale has once again stopped Pulaski County as they have on their three previous possessions. You're right about that, and the thing we always see is very good execution from Pulaski County. We haven't seen it yet, and there is a player for Annandale on the field, and the medical staff is going out to attend to him at this time. Annandale comes into today's game with a 12-1 record. That one loss came to... Uh, 
earlier in the season, second game of the season, Lake Braddock, the final score, 6-2. to two. Now, you know when you hear a 6-2 to two score, that had to be an ugly, ugly game. Well, that's only if you don't like defense, but for a former <laughs> defensive player, that had to be a great game to be able to play it that closely for Lake Braddock to play this team is playing for a state championship and winning 6-2. to two, That had to be an outstanding game. Well, you got to figure that there were some definite offensive mistakes made if uh, if uh, that game was only 6-2. to two. Uh, All the defense, you know, they scored a safety. That was just about it. And anyway, that happened second game of the season. The Adams at that point only 1-1 one and one on the year. They didn't know that they'd end up in this game at that point. But I think that was a great game to turn this team around as they really took off on a tear. They beat their next three teams by a combined score of about 160 to 7. <laughs> uh, I mean, you look at the scores, they were 37 nothing, 68 nothing, and 67 to 7. They followed that up with a 33 nothing and 40 to 6 game. They just uh, just caught fire there in the in the middle of the season. Well, you find yourself losing a game that close, you want to take out your frustration on whoever's next. So that whoever's next uh, really could see a a big difference in what that deficit was in scoring. Uh, Steve Dredge gets up off the field and he looks like he's okay. By the way, fans, if you'd like a copy of today's game professionally duplicated for you, stand by in a moment. Well, there it is now. There's the address to send to. If you don't get a chance to copy it down now, we'll come back to it in just a second for you. 11 minutes and 8 seconds, second quarter action. Pulaski County with a third down and 19 yards to go. Rather make it fourth. Oh, it says third down, but I think it's fourth down. They'll punt. It's a short punt. And it bounces back in Annandale's favor. And Willie, with that punt, this has been the, at least the third successive time on the changeover that Annandale has had superior field position. Oh, it really is. And the thing that is happening is that this Annandale defense is playing very, very solid football. And Pulaski County, I think, is starting to really show the effect that Eric Webb not being here has had on this ball club. So, again, Pulaski County has not been able to do anything on any type of sustained drive but Annandale needs to get some points from this great field position they continue to get as this game progresses. High formation for the Adams of Annandale. Glenn in there blocking for Jennings, who takes the handoff for about five, six yards. Looks like there may have been a, at the end of the play, I was thinking a ball possession problem, but it looks like Annandale got it back and maybe gained another couple of yards. Let's call it second down and a long four yards. This is second quarter action, still no score in the game. And the thing we're continuing to see are turnovers and fumbles, and I have to believe that this wind chill is having an effect on the players in terms of keeping a very firm grip on the ball. Just a little more than 10 minutes to go, second quarter action. These two teams come in with some pretty high-scoring offenses, as you saw at the top of the show. Pulaski County and Annandale both averaging more than 35 points a game. The defense is what wins state championships. Just ask any coach who's ever won one, and today both defenses have played fairly well. That play goes to the uh, first man through, who on this play uh, coming up off the bottom of the pile was uh, Jasmine Glenn. Glenn comes in with an average of 7.5 yards a carry, but back to my statement about defense, you usually don't get your average in a playoff game. You're right about that, and as soon as you were saying the aspect of defense as Glenn hit the line of scrimmage, you, show, you saw him stop with no forward motion, and that's the kind of solid defensive line play that... Pulaski County has been able to have so far. Then really both teams are continuous. This is a defensive struggle, and it'll be interesting to see who finally breaks through, and once they break through, whether they can continue uh, to try to expand some kind of potential score. McPhail back to pass, got the wind at his back now. Had a receiver Jennings out on the flat, but overthrew him. Of course, that's the uh, downside of having the wind at your back is that you have to take a little off the pass, float it in a little bit so it doesn't uh, go over the receiver's head. You're right. Jennings had a chance to catch that ball and barely missed it, but it appeared that Billy Ingalls, the uh, cornerback for Pulaski County, had taken an angle toward the play that had that ball been caught, that would have been a tremendous amount of yardage picked up additionally by Jennings. Orange will be back to punt now. And he'll have the wind at his back. I expect to see this one drop very close to the goal line. And so did the Pulaski receivers. Red is one of those receivers. Davis, the other one. Arndt runs up into it. And instead of getting a good kick, it was kind of a tough-to-handle kick. And it bounces out inside the 20-yard line. That was kind of an odd play, Willie. He took that ball on the run. Do you, do you think that he had an option there? Well, it looks like that might have been the case, that he came to all the ball as soon as it was snapped. And if something was there, he might have run. If not, just try to pull up and kick it. So he was able to get it off. Obviously, they didn't really gain any yardage 
to speak of on that punt, but it could have been a, a potential run on that play. Almost no yardage at all, as you point out, Willie. Maybe five yards on that punt officially. Actually went out of bounds at the 29. It looked like it went inside the 20, but it was angled out so badly. Might as well have just gone ahead and run it. Inside handoff, Lewis trips across the line of scrimmage. He'll gain about three yards, and Willie, nothing fancy from Pulaski County, not that we expected too much. We haven't even seen one of their famous inside reverses. Well, that wasn't quite the re reverse, but that was that kind of inside counter play they like to run. Again, Maurice Daniels standing inside made the stop, and I think that's one of the differences, and you have an outstanding middle linebacker who's very experienced in terms of not getting faked out. Well, then that play becomes a little bit more difficult to accomplish.